Back in the day when I was in school, we used the terms first and third world countries. First world referred to countries that were wealthy and highly developed, like say Norway, Canada and France. Third world referred to countries that were poor and underdeveloped, like say Ethiopia, Afghanistan or Burundi. However, over the last decade or two, the term third world country has become rather outdated and by some people's opinion, offensive. The term third world country started to have a bit of a negative vibe to it and perhaps became derogatory, hence why it is no longer really used. The term developing country is now used instead. The term first, second, third and fourth world countries actually started after the second world war when the world split into two major geopolitical blocks and spheres of influence, which had conflicting political views about government and the right society. The first world was the block of democratic industrialized countries with the American sphere of influence, also known as the West. Second world was the Eastern Bloc of communist social states, where the political and economic power should come from the workers. Third world was the remaining three quarters of the world's population, countries that did not belong to either bloc. And finally, fourth world. The term fourth world was coined in the early 1970s and isn't particularly well known or used much. It refers to widely unknown nations of indigenous peoples, first nations living within or across national state boundaries. This map shows how the world looked politically post World War II. First world countries are in green, second in red, third in yellow and neutral countries in white, with the newly communist nations being in light red. First world countries are also kind of known as the West, even though many of the countries are nowhere near the Western Hemisphere, such as New Zealand, Japan and Australia. There are a couple of another anomalies on this map, such as Cuba being part of the second world, even though it is geographically deeply within the West and this region, which is known as Western Sahara today, being a first world country. But what exactly is a developing country and who decides if you are one or not? Well, a developing country is a country that is working to become more advanced in areas such as industry, technology and economy. However, this definition is not universally agreed upon. There is also no clear agreement on which countries fit within this category. The term low and middle income country is often used interchangeably, but refers only to the economy of the country. These countries often have lower levels of economic growth, high poverty rates and less access to healthcare and education than more developed countries. Developing countries may also struggle with political instability, corruption and environmental challenges. However, this does not stop them from being vibrant cultures and communities with rich history and traditions. For reference, the 10 least developed countries on earth are South Sudan, Chad, Niger, Central African Republic, Burundi, Mali, Mozambique, Burkina Faso, Yemen and Guinea. So that is nine countries from Africa and one in Asia. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the 10 most developed countries are Switzerland, Norway, Iceland, Hong Kong, which is a special administrative region of China, Australia, Denmark, Sweden, Ireland, Germany and the Netherlands. So based on those definitions, this is currently how the world looks in terms of developed, developing and least developed countries. Now most of this makes sense. Most of the world's wealthiest, most developed countries are blue as you'd expect. However, this classification, which comes from the IMF and UN, is stating that all of Asia, excluding Singapore, is developing. Even the extremely wealthy Middle Eastern countries like Qatar and the UAE. However, as developed or developing countries is an unofficial term, there are a handful of countries that have self-declared themselves as developed countries. And because no one dictates who is and who isn't, no one can deny them this status. In the last couple of decades, Brunei, Hong Kong, Kuwait, Macau, Qatar, Singapore and the United Arab Emirates have all self-declared themselves as developed. 
And to be honest, it will be very hard to argue against any of those being developed countries. There are also subgroups within the developing countries classification by geography. They are least developed countries, landlocked developing countries and small island developing states. An example of a least developed country is Myanmar. Burundi is a landlocked developing country and Nauru is a small island developing state. Just to make everything more complicated, there is a new term that is being thrown about. Global South. The term Global South refers to a group of countries located primarily in the southern hemisphere of the world, including parts of Africa, Asia and Latin America. These countries tend to have lower levels of economic development and may face social, political and environmental challenges. The term is often used in contrast to the Global North, which includes more developed countries located primarily in the Northern Hemisphere. Excluding Australia, New Zealand and perhaps a couple of other smaller nations, there is pretty much a perfect North-South divide by this classification. However, there is a classification that makes perhaps the most sense, which is split into four different groups. There is low-income countries, which is similar to least developed countries, lower middle income countries, upper middle income countries, and finally higher income countries, which is similar to developed countries. The problem with this is that countries as a whole are lumped into these categories, but it doesn't tell the full story of that country. For example, South Africa is often seen as a first world and sometimes western country. It is usually detached from the rest of the continent when it comes to maps of wealth and quality of life. However, South Africa ranks as the country with the highest percentage of wealth inequality in the world at 63%. There are regions of South Africa that are stinking rich, but also some of the most impoverished people in the world live within the same country. Brazil is another country which is quite similar in this regard. In terms of its economy and power, Brazil is a powerhouse. Again, there is a lot of wealth in this country, but also a lot of poverty too. In the wealth disparity rankings, Brazil finds itself in ninth place. There are controversies over the term developing's use, as some people feel that it perpetrates an outdated concept of us versus them. In 2015, the World Bank declared that the developing slash developed world categorization had become less relevant and that they would phase it out eventually. Instead, their reports will present data for regions and income groups. So what are your thoughts on the term developing country or third world country? Do you find them derogatory or perhaps offensive? Let us know below. We hope you enjoyed this video and as always thank you very much for watching and we will see you in our next video.